as I get out of my car and walk round the back towards the house, he then jumped out and ambushed me for the second time, full f camouflage clothing, and he had a shotgun that I'd used before held up to my chest. These people are incredibly dangerous perpetrators. And that's why one of the things that I think is really important to be said is never, ever belittle stalking. You have no idea how quickly a stalker may go through those stages and it could potentially become a lethal situation. My experience of stalking actually started during an abusive relationship, but I wasn't aware of it being stalking until I learned more about it. Um, I was in a relationship that I hadn't realised was abusive until I went to the police after it had ended. Uh, and, and they were the ones who told me, as I told them some of the events that had happened, that it was uh, that it was that and that they were going to take action about it. Um, and it was once I'd ended the relationship that actually what I now know is stalking really ramped up. And my ex-partner uh, essentially wouldn't leave me alone. And it really felt like a full time job from his point of view. Um, at first, it was very much wanting. So he said to uh, to continue the relationship um, that, it, you know, it mustn't end. Um, it was really frightening. Uh, and in fact, after I had been to the police and after he'd been arrested the first time, it took a particularly different turn then and became much more threatening because he didn't stop the stalking. Despite being arrested, the stalking never stopped. Um, and it was only after he'd been arrested three times um, it had gone to the CPS who didn't and have said they failed to uh, press a charge that uh, after months more of stalking and quite frankly, driving me to feeling absolutely on the edge of not being able to cope with anything anymore. He, as a final incident, held me at gunpoint overnight uh, and following that, and only because I had a CCTV camera in, uh, installed that had recorded him doing it, he was then arrested uh, and one of the charges that was put to him about a month later, actually, was stalking. It's a horrific experience and it's far too common. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realise, probably like me, that they are being stalked because it's so easy to, particularly to start with, belittle a lot of the behaviours and not fully appreciate where these behaviours can lead. It's still quite early days in policing aspects to deal with stalking but it's something that policing needs to get get hold of and get a grip of because as we move into almost like a more technological age where people are using phones computers um you know apps that, that you locate people etc and some of these people don't know about that they've been on either their computer or their phone i think policing needs to get a real grip and get up to date with how this technology is being used to cause people some real um distress and alarm I think the majority of the population has an idea of what stalking is and that for the majority of the population, it's still very much the shadowy figure hiding in the bushes when actually that's not the case at all. That's just sort of one example of how stalking might present itself. So as an example of the sort of, if I call it in relationship stalking, I can remember going with a girlfriend um, on a shopping trip, nothing too exciting. It was to buy a, a few bits and pieces. And we were probably away for half a day, maybe six hours, a couple of hours to get to the place, a um, couple of hours there. And during that time, I remember her commenting, gosh, you know, that's the sixth or seventh time he's called you since we've been out. And he was calling, just checking where you are, just checking how it's going. And for me, I'd got so used to that sort of what I see now is blatant monitoring of where I was, who I was with, what I was doing, that I didn't think think anything of it. And when it's presented with the sort of the cover of, well, he's just being caring. He only wants to know. That's when you begin to belittle his behaviour. So to have that friend, I can remember her saying it and look on her face, looking quite puzzled and saying, he knows where you are. He knows you're with me. Um, so as one example of clearly being stalked when through my having been used to him being very much like that and wanting to know where I was, wanting to know who I was with. Um, it, uh, it just didn't strike me. It didn't strike me. It's when it got much, much worse post-relationship um, is when I, I probably didn't even realise it was particularly stalking them because it was just an accentuation of what his behaviour had always been. That was really a trigger for the stalking to ramp up incredibly. And so it was that loss of control. He wasn't in control anymore. I'd ended the relationship and he 
I suppose, wasn't happy with that situation. Um, and that's when the relation, when the stalking, sorry, began to increase. First of all, he wouldn't leave me alone. We're, uh, we're on a small holding on the side of a hill. He changed his pattern behavior very significantly. So in a way that he never had done previously, you know, he'd walk his dog out of the village towards us here. He'd frequently be parked um, at the, the bottom of the access track up to our place in a way that he'd never been before. So all these ways of changing what had been normal for him before. Um, he'd he'd follow me in my car. Uh, and at that stage, it, a lot of it was we've got to be together. Um, you know, how, how much I must need him and he must need me. As we've seen, there are many incidents and evidences where, where if the behaviour isn't dealt with, isn't addressed, um, then things can escalate either over a period of time or very quickly. And it depends on each circumstance. And, and you know, every incident, each circumstance has different aspects to it, albeit there is usually a common theme running through it about either the, the male or the female victim of the stalking is getting unwanted attention that then escalates from, from maybe low level beginnings. And maybe this is where police needs to recognize and understand this, that quite often, you know, um, early intervention, early prevention, and deterrent is a lot better than having to deal with it towards the latter end, where the behaviour has almost become um, just normal for the for the for the offender, for the suspect. They can't see an awful lot of what they're doing is wrong, but they are escalating their behaviour. What made me go to the police the first time was after this behaviour had gone on for it was over two weeks, um, and I'd been out one night. The children were away uh, with their father. Uh, I came back late and. Uh, I got a taxi home. I had I'd been drinking, but I wasn't drunk. I'd walked up the access track to ours. Taxi had dropped me at the bottom of the track. Um, I put one foot on the cattle grid, which is the entrance into our place, and that's when he jumped out. He'd been hiding uh, in a what's essentially a sheep pen inside our walls. So he ambushed me at home in the dark, no one else around. I knew I was incredibly vulnerable. I felt really, really threatened. Um, he was wearing a, a coat. And one of my first thoughts was, gosh, he could have the, the poacher's shotgun concealed in there because, you know, shooting is very much part of rural life. It's something we used to do together. Um, and I thought that's a step too far. I managed to get past him and into the house. And that's when I decided, actually, um, this, this is too much. This has got to stop. It's really affecting me negatively. And I was really fearful. So I um, went to the police uh, and reported the behaviour. And as I said, that's when they said to me, well, actually, that has been, talking about the relationship, harassment, common assault. So, And the list went on and on. And I felt more and more stupid because I hadn't been aware. Of, there was, I shouldn't have felt stupid, but I did. I hadn't been aware that it was an abusive relationship. I hadn't been aware how bad the situation was. And they then said, well, we're going to arrest him. His guns will be taken during the investigation. Um, and uh, his, and sort of that was the beginning of the involvement of the criminal justice system. When men commit the stalking offences, their behaviour can escalate into violence, probably a lot swifter, and in my experience, a lot quicker than, than maybe a woman's one. But the female suspects, it tends to be almost like watching, besetting, and following, etc. So it's almost like a, 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 a low level form of surveillance or their, their own form of, of just harassing somebody that moves into stalking. Whereas the men, I think, escalate their behaviour, as we've seen in many, many, you know, there's many cases that, that evidence is, they escalate their behaviour into a form of, of, of threats and violence, which is an aggravated offence under, under legislation. So I think that's the main difference. But when it comes down to actually being victims of, of harassment and stalking, they come from men and women, you know, both, both, both sexes, both genders can become victims of this, as well as being suspects. As the stalking ramped up and ramped up, it wasn't a surprise, it was a shock when the final incident happened. You know, home's meant for your safe place where you can go and it, it's okay. Um, I got out of my car uh, and only because I had, because I felt threatened and I knew he was getting worse and I strongly felt he was going to do something, I'd had a CCTV camera put up that by chance happened to be uh, where the cars are parked. As I get out of my car and walk around the back towards the house, he then jumped out and ambushed me for the second time, full camouflage clothing. And he had a shotgun that I'd used before held up to my chest. 
And I've, I've used this shotgun. I knew uh, it's semi-automatic. It takes three cartridges. It's got a really fine trigger. I was very, very aware of what that weapon was capable of uh, and, and very aware in that moment of what he was capable of. So as I said, with the stalking having increased massively, I knew he was getting worse. I knew something was going to happen. I just didn't know what. If I showed you some of the information I was submitting to the police at the time, it's textbook stalking. It's full of red flags. However, it went to the Crown Prosecution Service as harassment and they didn't charge. They have since said that was a failure on their part and they should have charged and that would have made the world of difference. Instead of which, he was released after the third arrest and his guns were returned to him because he hadn't been charged. So you have then got a man who has been stalking, who's incredibly angry, who I'm aware has got, I feel, the potential to, to do more. It's very threatening. And he's essentially been rearmed by, uh, by the police. The police have since admitted that that was an error and they shouldn't have given him his weapons back. I'd engaged with the criminal justice system and had essentially been told, we can't do anything. And if you do that and the criminal justice system can't do anything, you feel totally, totally on your own. There's nothing that can be done. He just can't be stopped. Uh, and so if it wasn't for the intervention of my GP, uh, then goodness knows where it would have ended. He wouldn't have stopped without being arrested. And I've often said, you know, you've mentioned the CCTV camera. And the way I talk about it is, well, you know, that was all right for me. I happen to have a few hundred quid in the bank, and I could afford to spend it on a camera. Um, I can remember one friend saying, you won't need it. He won't come back. He's been arrested. That's really serious. And me just thinking, no, I know him. I know him. He's not stopping. He's getting worse and worse. So if I hadn't had that money in the bank, then it would never have happened because he didn't initially admit that he'd done anything wrong. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. Um, and it was only the evidence, the CCTV camera, that secured the conviction. So imagine that. If I hadn't had the money in the bank and had been able to afford a camera, he'd never have been charged. He wouldn't have served a prison sentence. Goodness knows where it would have ended. And some of, a lot of my motivation for wanting to make change is because I think, well, what about the other people? What about people who can't do what I've done? The police need to step up a lot more and help victims out. You can't expect victims of stalking to know and understand everything that goes on around the legislation or the court process. That's clearly the police's responsibility um, and telling the victims what they need them to do. You know, report any incidents that happen as soon as they happen, document them, keep them, save them, etc. A lot of that is, is advice and guidance that should be coming out from police officers. These people are incredibly dangerous perpetrators and that's why one of the things that I think is really important to be said is never ever belittle stalking. You have no idea how quickly a stalker may go through those stages and it could potentially become a lethal situation.